Gwen Leong, and I am the NorCal division leader of an anime outreach ministry called Jesus Otaku. And I'm here to tell you my story of how God brought me to this ministry. It's also a story of my faith and how my faith has grown from wanting to serve God out of a sense of duty to a desire to serve God. I hope by the end of my talk that you will be inspired with ideas of how to move your faith also from a sense of duty to a sense of desire. Um, and we've been hearing a lot of people share about their passions, where God has led them. So I hope that my talk will inspire you and give you some ideas of how to invite God into your life and discover what your passion and what your purpose could be with that passion. So it's really funny that God brought me to evangelism because I had a really bad experience with outreach. Um, I grew up at the church, and um, by the time I was 14 years old, I thought I had the faith pretty much figured out. I thought, okay, the way that you grow in Christ is you first start as a baby Christian, and there's stuff that you don't know about God yet, but you're just getting there, and you have your own earthly desires. And then you become the regular Christian. That means you know what you ought to do, but you don't always do it, like reading the Bible or praying. And then you get to super Christian. At that point, you have left behind all earthly desires, and you have God's um, desire to spread the gospel, and you probably like are off like serving um, in Africa as a long-term missions trip, right? And that's great. And how do regular Christians become Super Christians, I figured, well, you're supposed to love God, and if you love God, then you obey him. And I thought, well, I don't know what it means to love God, like, in my heart. I know it theoretically, but I don't know God that well. Mm, but I can follow directions real good, so I'm just going to do it because I ought to. I'm going to grow in my faith because it's my duty. And doing things because you ought to got me pretty far. It got me up in the morning to go to church, and it got me to Bible study. But um, it didn't work out for me when I was involved in VBS. So when I was 14, my mom comes up to me and she says, hey, wouldn't you like to devote your summer serving God by um, teaching kids about God? And I thought, man, I know I'm not that into kids, I'm not that into teaching, which is funny because now I'm a teacher, but um, I don't like those things a lot, but you know what? It's the right Christian thing to do, so sure, why not? Um, and turns out, um, at the age of 14, I was shy, and I didn't like being in the spotlight, and I didn't like talking to strangers. It turns out, VBS is all about being in the spotlight and talking to strangers. After three days of training, I discovered I did not like it. And I thought about some more and I thought, well, God said to evangelize, and if this is what evangelism is, then I'm just gonna stick with it. And I am a hard worker and I've never quit anything. So I thought, maybe it'll grow on me. So I did it because I ought to, and I finished the week of training. I got three days into VBS, and I broke down crying. Um, it didn't work for me. I asked God, why did you create me this way? I see everyone else in my training program, they're all extroverts, they love it, and I don't. What's wrong with me? Why can't I make myself do this? Duty didn't work for me. How can you get yourself to do things that God asks you to do when it's hard? like forgiveness, or being generous, or in my case, evangelizing. I tried to do it because I ought to. Ought to wasn't good enough. How can we get to a place from duty to desire? That's my story. This is where we're starting from. So my mom goes up to me after the end of this crazy week, and she says, you know what, Gwen? God made you for a purpose, and he is going to have something really awesome meant just for you, and you're gonna love it because you're gonna serve him the way he made you. That was the promise, and I had to hold on to that, and that was the beginning of my journey. So, time passed, I finished junior high, finished high school, finished college, and at this time, I began to talk to God a lot, 
And I realized that, man, God is ridiculously generous. Like, I had a crush on a guy in junior high and, or high school. He asked someone else to prom, and I was super bummed about it. I come crying to God, and God says, don't worry, Gwen. I'm going to give you loads of date to prom. He wasn't kidding. I got a date to prom every single prom. And I'm, like, that was crazy. God did not have to give me a date to prom. Like, if I, if I was God, I wouldn't do that. It's like spoiling a child. But God is ridiculously generous. And it's like, there's no spiritual benefit to doing this. There's no spiritual lesson. But God's like, no, I want you to know I'm crazy. <laughs> so um, I learned that God is so kind. And he cares about what I care about. And I learned that I was slowly beginning to see God more as a, not so much as a master, but as a father. And little did I realize God was taking me on a journey, moving me from duty to desire. And the first step was actually enjoying him. It was huge. And the more I spent time with God, I was like, wow, you know, you've even taken the hard areas in my life and you've explained how you are in it. You've made it better. What if I invited you into another part of my life? Okay, let me do something crazy. What if I invited you into anime? And that's actually the next step God took me on. So what exactly is anime? <laughs> Good question. Um, anime is Japanese cartoons for the uninformed. That's a lot like, Amer it's like American cartoons, but not. Um, <laughs> Um, Japanese anime is for any age, depending on the show. Some are for children, some are for adults, some are for all ages, and it hits all genres. So you got sports, you have romance, you have samurai, all sorts. Um, and they're normally recognized for large eyes, colorful eyes, colorful hair, and great displays of emotion. I love anime because of the, they often have themes of friendship, sacrificial love, and um, redemptive stories for villains. Um, and the really intense fans, hardcore fans, often call themselves otaku. Otaku basically means nerd or fanatic in Japanese. And the otaku love to dress up as their favorite character, like on the slide. Or they'll write stories about their favorite character. Or they're going to um, even draw pictures of their favorite character. And we often get together in conventions. And so when I invited God into anime, I'm going to pretend that turns. When I invited God into anime, I was at a convention. Click again. Too fast. Okay. Um, it's that one. And I saw the sign right outside of our convention. And I thought, wow. I feel judged even though I'm saved. And I thought, God, what do you have to say about this? And I felt that at the end of the convention, God was saying, I love everyone here. I love the protesters. I love the people at the convention, even the guys waving rainbow flags, even the guys dressed up in drag. I love absolutely everyone. And I thought, wow, I don't think people are hearing that here. And I thought, well, maybe I could tell them that. And um, God confirmed this calling because at church, they were talking about how important it was to reach out to people on the margins. And let me tell you, um, I was in high school, and it was not cool to like anime in high school. And um, we're often misunderstood because we do crazy things like dress up in cosplay, and then we'll like cry over our favorite characters and have crushes on 2D characters. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, we're all weird. Um, but some people will call us freaks. Um, I've heard people at churches describe anime as of the devil. A lot of people feel misunderstood. And they feel like the only place they feel accepted are at conventions. So. I knew I was, on, I was able to reach people on the margins. Click. Click again. Um, so some things to know also about people who are super into anime. Last year, at the largest convention in North America, over 90,000 people attended. And its numbers are growing. The majority ages are between 15 to 25. That's the millennial generation. That's the generation that's left the church. And they have had bad experiences with the church. They won't step foot inside a church. 
but they'll talk about anime, and they'll talk about anime with me. So I thought, wow, who better to send to reach out to the otaku than one of their own? God gave me a unique interest for a unique opportunity. So God has invited me. I've invited God into anime. I have my calling. I'm all set, and I think, all right, I want to do an anime ministry. I've got to find people to do this with. And I'm going to need ideas. And I think, how am I going to find Christians who like anime? And I thought, I know. I'm going to go to a convention, and I'm going to have my own prayer ministry. And I'm going to make a big announcement. There's going to be loads of Christians there. And from there, I'm sure there'll be somebody who's interested in the same thing I do. So the day arrives. We get there. Only a couple people show up. And nobody's interested. I have no team and no ideas. And a, week, a year later, still nothing. I invited God into anime, and nothing happened. So a month later, I ended up not being able to make it to the same anime convention. I ended up um, wanting to really get my anime fixed, so I go to a different convention called AX. And I go there, and on the last day, there is a talent show, and this group comes up, and they're called Jesus otaku. And their slogan says, you are loved just as you are. I thought I was the only one. I thought there's no way that anyone else in the world who has this crazy idea to combine anime with God. But God actually had someone waiting in the wings for me. So I go to their booth afterwards. I start crying. They cry. We all cry. A guy dressed up as Jesus comes and gives us all a hug. <laughs> This is a true story. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, little did I realize that God was actually having me take another step of faith. And that is called waiting. After you invite God in, he's going to make you wait. And waiting sucks. You often ask yourself, will God answer? And you also ask, why do we have to wait? God does answer. Sometimes he takes a long time to answer it. But he is working while you're waiting. It seems like it's silent, but he's actually doing stuff. I made a little graph to figure it out, actually. So if you look on here, um, the year I invited God to anime it was actually the same year that Jesus Otaku was formed, before I met them. It was also the same year that I was inv invited to be involved in leadership in my fellowship. It was also the same year that God asked me to lead um, take listening prayer classes and um, skip, skip, skip. It's not working very well. Anyways, God asked me to lead all of these areas. And it turned out um, years passed, year one, year two, year three. By year four, I was invited to be involved in Jesus Otaku. And by that time, God had taught me how to lead, how to listen to him, and how to have faith. It took him three years to teach me to be a leader. And it took him three years to get Jesus Otaku to the place where they were able to train our group and our division. So waiting does take a lot of time. Um, but waiting is worth it because God is working. And it's really true. I'm trying to work with these slides. It's okay. Click, click. Kind of. Um, so... Um, this whole process that God took me through, he moved me from duty to desire. And I realized that what he really was doing was working in my heart. We were merging hearts together. I used to think that merging hearts with God was really that God took a heart implant, a transplant. He took away your earthly desires and put in his desire to spread the gospel. But it turns out God's more interested in bringing our desires together. So God instead says, you know what? I love anime because it connects people together with non-believers. I love anime because it shows my themes. And God says, I love how you love people. You have that godly desire within you, and I'm going to refine that because I know you're shy because you don't know how to connect and you're afraid of rejection. But I'm going to clothe you with my love so you will feel acceptance. You can reach out to people. So, that's the recipe that God taught me. 
And I'm going to share with you my mom promised to me, which is God made you for a purpose. And it might take some time to find it. And you're going to have to invite him closer to you. This might take a long time, but it's going to be worth it. You're going to move from duty to desire. Thank you. We Mass Media, Media Empowering Community.